Good evening, Excellency ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to Cambodia Global Dialogue of Southeast Asia TV. Uh, I guess you're probably surprised why I'm not wearing bow tie and all well dressed today. And I tell you why, because the reason is that today I'm going to take you to another dimension of how Cambodia is positioning itself in the world. But this time it's not in trade, it's not in economic, it's not in law. You know, it's about wildlife conservation. And I have the pleasure to have with me today um, Nick Marks. And Nick? Nick or Marks? Nick. Yes. Thanks, Sipana. So, yes, Thanks for uh, asking. Welcome. Uh, Nick is, is a wildlife uh, uh, rescue and care program director uh, for Wildlife Alliance. And we're going to be discussing how Cambodia is doing in, in its effort to pr conserve, protect the wildlife. Uh, and uh, Nick have a lot of experience in that. And, you know, we will be discussing, sharing a video clip uh, uh, discussion on how Cambodia position itself, you know, in the area of uh, uh, the, the, the implementation of the CITES uh, uh, Convention, which is the Convention on International Trade on Endangered Species, uh, how we're doing and what progress has been made. And we're going to also show some concrete case on some of the conservation that we're doing. But uh, before we, we start the program, Nick, uh, maybe I would ask you to say a few words about yourself. When did you come and what you're doing? And then we, we can show uh, a bit the clip on uh, the work that you've been doing. Thanks, Ipana. Thanks very much for inviting me today. Um, I've been working with wildlife basically all my life. <clears throat> I've been in Cambodia uh, for 10 years now, uh, working for the organization Wildlife Alliance. We're assisting the forestry administration in our programs. Uh, the Cambodian Forestry Administration. Um, before I came here, uh, I've worked in, in England, of course. I'm from UK. Um, I've also worked in, in Southern Africa. I've worked in India um, and a very short time in South America, all working with uh, wildlife um, conservation. Uh, uh, Nick, you know, you, you mentioned the Forestry Administration. In fact, this whole program, you know, on uh, the, the, the wildlife rapid rescue, uh, it, it's all under the administration of the Cambodian Ministry of Agriculture, but more so the Forestry Administration. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Um, we are assisting the Forestry Administration implemented the Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team yes. with the assistance of Wildlife Alliance. And also uh, in 1995, they created Phnom Tamao Wildlife Rescue mm. Center. Okay. Um, both are of the Forestry Administration and Wildlife Alliance is assisting. Yes. Both in, in excellent projects. Yes. Fantastic projects. Um, Cambodia, since we emerged from uh, the years of difficulty since the Paris Convention, we have reintegrated into uh, the, the community of nation. I think we have ratified many international treaties and convention. And in the area of uh, wildlife uh, conservation, uh, my understanding that uh, Cambodia is a signatory of the CITES, which is the Convention on International Trade on Endangered Species. Uh, tell me more about the, the scope of that convention uh, internationally and nationally and how Cambodia has been doing. CITES is, governs international trade. Yeah. It does not govern um, national trade within the country. Yes. Um, it is an agreement between the different countries yes. not to trade mm. in endangered species. Yes. And, and there are categories of, of, of animals as to how endangered they yes, are, yes. vulnerable, endangered. Mm -hmm. um, it is adhered to mm -hmm. by many countries, mm -hmm. and it's loosely adhered mm. to by many countries. Okay. Um, obviously, it's essential mm. to stop international trade. Yes. Um, Trade is what is driving species to extinction. Yes. It is a, a, some minor consumption within the country is not really mm. causing too much damage, though that is illegal also. Yes. Uh, it's trade, international trade with other countries that is causing such mm. damage mm. to wildlife popu mm. populations mm. and causing extinctions. Mm. In, in, when you say endangered species, there are different categories of vulnerability, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, there's, there's different categories. Um, endangered species, it's illegal to trade without specific permission. Mm. Um, less 
endangered species, perhaps um, it, it's easier hmm. to get permission I to see. trade these animals I I internationally. Yeah. And that isn't necessarily dead species, of course, um, if there is um, like an exchange of animals mm. with mm. conservation in initiatives, yes. breeding animals in yes. different facilities, yes. captive breeding, for yes. example. Yes. That also needs permission from CITES. Yes. Well, you know, I, I have recently uh, uh, done some research on the, uh, the so-called non-tariff measure which is more the sort of regulation that prevent, prohibit, you know, the import or export of various uh, product, uh, including animal, of course. And it's interesting that, yes, Cambodia has uh, many major, so-called mm -hmm. non-tariff measure related to such prohibition, mm -hmm. where there are some, uh, uh, some, some type of animal that would require mm -hmm. the, the, the permit, the export permit, from the Forestry Administration, from Ministry of Agriculture. So in that sense, uh, uh, I can say that the, the Cambodian government is in fact implementing the, the CITES. But, you know, you, you are involved with the Forestry Administration uh, for the last 10 years on the Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team. What are they doing? Um, the Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team yes. um, is a group, a small group of men eight mm. military police, four mm. forestry officials, mm. uh, under the administration of the forestry yeah. uh, uh, administration. There's one Cambodian civilian advisor mm. and myself, I work with okay. the rapid rescue team also yes. uh, when I'm needed. Yes. It's a fantastic team, they tour the whole country addressing the illegal wildlife trade, mm. uh, educating the people that it is illegal to yeah. trade wildlife. Yeah. And confiscating illegally traded mm. wild animals throughout the country. That's just a group of 12 men. They've done the most fantastic job. Mm. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, um, I'm sure it, people, Cambodian people, will remember that that there was wildlife could be bought and sold anywhere. Mm. Mm. Nowadays, you don't see it. Yes. I'm not saying we, that the wildlife rapid rescue team has stopped the trade, but it's reduced it hugely, mm. and it's and it's created the notion of the importance mm. of conserving wildlife mm. and the illegality mm. of trading. Mm. Like I say, this team doesn't in fact patrol forests, mm. though we go into the forest now and again if we hear there is an animal captured within the mm. forest. Mm. We are dealing with trade, mm. trade in, that is doing such damage. Mm. It's not, they're not dealing with subsistence. Well, <laughs> you know, the, the, the dark side of globalization, you know, there are the good side and there's a, the, the downside of it. The dark side is that with this uh, openness of this uh, liberal trade, there will all be an you know, opportunity for people to take advantage. And unfortunately, you know, wildlife is such a lucrative, high-paying niche market for a few rich guys who want to feel that they are they're going to live forever Indeed. by eating uh, you know, a tiger, uh, meat or whatever, right? So, so, I, so I think in that sense, uh, I'm glad that the Cambodian government has has tackled that. But do you see in the last, uh, you know, uh, several year, a a, re, a so like a substantial increase of such a trade? You, you did mention some, but but uh, in in term of proportionality, is there a substantive reduction of of such a illegal trade? Huge reduction. It's such a credit to the Cambodian government. And I should say also that we've had uh, the Vietnamese uh, Forest Protection Department coming over and actually questioning our guys, mm. our wildlife rapid rescue team, and seeing how they operate their mm. um, operations. Mm. Uh, there's been a huge reduction, yes. a huge reduction. Like I say, um, why is there such a reduction? Yeah. Is it because the guys have done such a fantastic job? Mm. Is it because there's less wildlife around. Hmm. It could be. It's probably both. I, I think that would link what you just said. That would link us to the next uh, topic, which I want to cover, which is the Phnom Penh. Uh, hmm. I thank you for uh, you know give me a guide tour yeah. of, of with my kids uh, to see uh, all the animal. But you see, for for Cambodian, it's funny because we look at Phnom Penh. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a few other places, we call it a zoo, a national zoo. But when I went there, you say, but spa, it's also a zoo, but it's more a national rescue center. So 
so I can see the link that, you know, many of the animal that was rescued by the wildlife rescue team has probably brought into Phnom Tamal, right? But what is unique about Phnom Tamal that is very different than what I call the concrete jungle zoo of the big New York City Zoo or Paris Zoo, where you go there, you walk in a fancy brick, you know, cement, uh, you know, and then the poor animal is there. What is different about that? If I could say, yeah, the Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team has brought most, many of the animals to Phnom Tamal. We release what we can, healthy, strong animals. We release again in, in protected habitat. Yes. But not everything we can release. Some's too young, mm. injured, and mm. maybe we'd be able to release them again in the future. Yes. But Phnom Tamau is essential mm. for these animals. Yeah. Without Phnom Tamau, these animals would be dead, mm. and without and we turn nothing away. Mm. No animal, that, a wild animal that comes to Phnom Tamau, is no, ever turned away. And it's a real credit to the uh, Cambodian Forestry Administration mm. and Mr. Nick, Nick Ratanapik, the Cambodian mm. director of Phnom Tamau, mm. that Phnom Tamau is as wonderful as it is. How big is that? The whole area, it's set in Phnom Tamau Protected Forest, which mm. is 2,300 hectares. Wow. It's a big area. Yeah. And we can release certain animals into that forest oh, yeah. when they recover. Um, the actual rescue center, the zoo area itself, mm. Mm. I guess is around 100 hectares, mm. something like mm. that. But yes, you, you ask me um, the difference between Cambodia's national zoo, if you mm. like, mm. and a western zoo. Mm. Cam Cambodia's National Zoo is much, much nicer mm. than anything that we have in the West. Mm. Um, Cambodians, if I could say, they're lovely, gentle people, mm. and they have this inferiority complex mm. that everything in the West mm. is better mm. than what they have here. Certainly with Nom Tamau, this isn't the case. Yeah. You visit a, a Western Zoo, mm. and there's lots of concrete, there's lots of steel, so there's cage. Anim <laughs> they're all in cages. Yeah. You visit Nom Tamau, yes. and there's lots of trees, there's big enclosures, the animals are nearly all of them breeding, and mm. that's a sign of, of animals' contentedness mm. in captivity. Ah. We, Western people don't like zoos. That, 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 that is the, the trick, no? I mean, they, unless they feel content, they feel in their environment that they will not breed, right? Often they don't breed. Often they don't breed. And the breeding record at Phnom Tamau would be the envy of most Western zoos. Is that we right? breed almost everything. Wow. Um, good diet, enough food, mm. uh, big natural enclosures. The animals are, tr they're, they're, it's a natural area for them. Mm. Okay, their range has how, been... How, how, how many tigers you have there? Altogether, there's eight tigers. At eight tigers, they're big ones. Yeah. And yeah. elephant? There's five elephants. Lions? All, lions? We do have lions, actually, ah. and that's an interesting story, too, yes. because they're not, obviously, indigenous to Cambodia. Oh, is that right? But the Forestry Administration confiscated the lioness and it, it coming, uh, th traveling through, it was going transiting. through, she was going through, transiting Cambodia. And uh, we then thought it'd be lions group animals, so mm. we, we um, got an, um, a male in mm. from America, just so she could have some company. Is that right? So there are a pair of uh, non-indigenous lions. I see, I see. Wow, wow. So in, in Phnom Tamau now, um, it's a huge place, it's a lot of trees. You know, when people go there, they do not, they don't feel that they are walking from cage to cage and I can attest that the feeling is very different mm. because you feel like you're walking into nature and then you see a gibbon then mm. well I mean I wouldn't say I would want to hang around with a tiger but you feel that that uh, the feeling of being Some of my best friends are tigers. Yes, part of nature but I, I want you to share me a bit uh, a, a story of that baby elephant that was rescued, you call it Chuk, right? Mm. I think it, it is a story that needs to be told on how, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the Wala Alliance, the Forest Administration have, you know, taking you know, such a dramatic case and help give life, mm -hmm. give a future, give happiness to an elephant, sure. a baby elephant. Sure. Like I said, yeah, all the animals at Nom Tamau, nearly all of them are rescued, nearly all of them would be dead without mm. Nom Tamau. Um, Chuk, uh, we had a report that uh, there was a, a young elephant in Mondelkiri. Mm. He'd lost his mother. He'd also lost part of his foot. Mm. Um, I went up there with uh, the ch senior um, wildlife vet mm. uh, working for the forestry department, Dr. Yeah. Nim T. Yeah. Uh, we went up and with two members of the wildlife rapid rescue team. We went up to assess the situation. Uh, Chuk 
was then being cared for at a, um, uh, a forest protection post mm. Mm. in the Shrepok Wilderness Area mm. uh, run by WWF. And the elephant was in serious trouble. He was very, very undernourished. Mm. He was pretty wild. He was a wild little baby. He was extremely thin in very bad condition. Mm. And his foot was seriously infected. Mm. Um, I stayed with Chuk uh, for around a week, 10 days, um, trying to calm him down, get him tame. I hand fed him everything he ate just mm. to calm him down. I slept beside him mm. just to get him more easy with people, mm. while Nim Ti went back to uh, Phnom Penh to discuss with uh, the director of the Forest Administration, um, uh, then Mr. T so uh, His Excellency Ti Sokun, mm. as to what should be done with Chuk. Mm. Um, His Excellency Ti Sokun correctly uh, said that Chuk should go to Phnom Penh. Mm. So then we made the difficult journey um, from Shrepok, mm. uh, Mondulkiri, Wow. down to uh, Phnom Tamau, which was, took us a long, long time. Mm. I slept in the back mm. in the tr of the truck. We created a little cage in mm. the back mm. of the truck mm. with banana trees. Mm. Oh, wow. And I, I stayed with Chuk, um, mm. hand-fed him, made sure he was okay. Uh, we stopped now and again for, uh, to let Chuk rest. And we arrived at Phnom Tamau. And the vets at Phnom Tamau, uh, Nim Ti and his colleagues, did an excellent job healing Chuk's foot, which was just mm. a raw mess. Yes. You could see the skin yes. at the bottom of his foot closing over, closing over, yeah, almost yeah. weakly, yeah. until skin had covered the whole yeah, yeah. bottom of his foot. But he'd lost, yeah. I guess, about six or eight inches mm. of his foot, which we couldn't re regrow for mm. him. Ah, okay. So my next job was to um, procure a, a, a prosthetic foot for mm. Chuk. Mm. And I contacted several uh, prosthetics organizations mm. within Cambodia, um, and, and nobody, everybody wished me luck, mm. but nobody would help. Wow. Finally, I, co I con uh, contacted the Cambodian School of Prosthetics and Orthotics, a yes. lady called Cathy McConnell, yeah, yeah. Uh, in conjunction with the Cambodia Trust. Yeah. And they said, well, we don't know if we can be successful, but we'd love to try and help you. And they've been absolutely and fantastic. They, they've been wonderful. And when Chuk is now on his third prosthetic foot, and they're coming, I think it's on May sometime later this month mm, mm. To, uh, to, to get a fitting mm. for another, take a cast for, another, for his fourth uh, shoe. They've mm. been wonderful. Nick, you know, I, I must say that um, these are some sort of story that would raise the awareness of uh, the, the, the danger of not protecting our wildlife. And let's face it, Cambodia, it's, uh, it, we're blessed uh, of, by having great natural resource, uh, good landscape, mountains, uh, great lakes uh, that fed, you know, millions of people, the Great Lake. And, uh, and again, wildlife is also part of, uh, you know, of, of the lifestyle of uh, the people. You're talking about the elephant in the Mundukuri, Ratnakuri. They're part of the people, you know, uh, lifestyle, culture, and everything. And to me, being a, a trade person, international trade person myself, I, I cannot help but to always try to make a link, you know, with the, the rest of the world. How are we faring? What other countries are doing? And what area we could do something to excel? Because let's face it, Cambodian being a country that have gone through so many years of difficult uh, days, years, we, we now want to be able to project to the rest of the world that we are a nation that is... Uh, do its best to abide by international trade, international convention, international treaties. We want to be a good global citizen. And it's not only in area of law, of, of economics, that uh, one, one want to be remembered. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had uh, a discussion on martial art, how it can raise the flag. Today, we, I'm so happy that we, we can talk about something that the animal don't talk, unfortunately. But they have as much uh, right. They they have um, as much uh, desire to live peacefully, uh, you know, as much as us. And I think there is a this international uh, framework that allow them, that give them such a right, and we should comply with it. And and I'm glad from your uh, exchange with us today to to, to see that uh, the, the Cambodian government, the Forestry Administration, particularly, has taken this uh, commitment, this international commitment as uh, set under the, the CITES framework uh, seriously. 
and one can see that after years of, uh, of effort, you know, you see the result. The result is something that you said yourself as coming from UK, you know, having seen zoo around the world that you are proud of Phnom Tamal as being a, a national zoo slash rescue center that have given life, given hope to many of uh, the, 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 uh, the animal that would be dead, you know. And on the same time, you give a chance to local Cambodian to appreciate our own life, wildlife also, including my son and my, and my daughter. Uh, before I close the show, what's your last word? What do you want to see in the future? As you said, um, Cambodian wildlife is as much your heritage as your wonderful people, your beautiful gentle people, and your wonderful temples. If you lose your wildlife, you lose part of your heritage. Um, I would say that Phnom Tamao is the most fantastic uh, rescue center. We don't like the word zoo in, yeah, yeah. in yes, my country. Yes. Yes. Um, look after your wildlife, appreciate your wildlife. Mm. Go and go visit Phnom Tamao and appreciate what you have there. You have the most wonderful place. Um, wonderful wildlife, care for it, protect it. Be leaders in your wildlife conservation policies and your protection policies within forests, conserving forests. They're the wildlife's home. Um, go to Nom Tamau and see the wonderful wildlife you have. Perhaps a unique, a unique experience for anybody in the world to visit Phnom Tamau. Mm. I don't think there's a, a developing country mm. with a government-run rescue center as good as Phnom Tamau, as natural as Nom Tamau and with a record as great as Nom Tamao. Yeah. Well, Nick, we're coming to the end of the show, uh, but I would want to pick on one word that you mentioned, which is heritage. And here I want to close the, sh uh, the show by saying to the audience that, you know, uh, Cambodia is known for its temple, its our heritage, uh, our culture, but you rightly say so that our wildlife is also part of our heritage and we should nurture, we should value, we should uh, uh, preserve and you know uh, take care of it and it is on that note that I would want to make also a plea to uh, philanthropists around the world to come and help you know uh, continue this this effort. Cambodia we, we're a least developed country we do whatever we can the forestry administration do whatever we can within its own budgetary mean we're not rich country but for what they've been doing I think they're doing a great job but we hope that other people would step in to adopt an animal in Phnom Tamao and hopefully this will be the beginning of a new partnership Cambodia and the rest of the world. So Excellency ladies and gentlemen uh, I want to say thank you for for watching our show again and I look forward to see you in Phnom Tamao. Good night.